Welcome back my friend, I hope you have been well. Make yourself comfortable while I recall where we were. Ah, yes, with all the passages behind the secret door now explored, our heroes make their way back to the room, where Tiasas first spotted the secret door. The wizard was relieved that no one mentioned how he found it, as they passed the table. Going east from the room was a tunnel dug into the wall. Our heroes move carefully and quietly into the tunnel and soon find themselves in a short piece of corridor where both ends had caved in long ago. It does not take long for our heroes to find out what had dug the tunnels that had rediscovered the original corridor as a pair of Gricks scrambled down the walls and try to sneak up on Kaimin and Tiasis who were at the rear of the group. Grid is quick to react and nimbly for his size dodges between Kaimin and Tiasis so he can get a clean strike on one of the Gricks which he cleaves in half. Tiasis turns around, and with a spray of poison kills the other Grick. However, the encounter is not over, as the wizard looks at the ceiling, and spots another two Gricks. One Grick runs along the wall and attacks Holt, missing, while the other attacks and misses Tiasis. Holt attacks the Grick back, but it is tougher than he expected. Kaimin helps Tiasis, but like Holt, does not kill the Grick he attacked. The two heavily injured Gricks do not get a second attack though as Grid finishes them both off. Our heroes spend a few moments looking carefully at the ceiling, but do not see any more Gricks, and move on into the tunnel, dug into the wall at the end of the corridor. The tunnel leads to a room of unknown size, as the entire east side has caved in. There are five Gricks on the ceiling. Tiasa smiles, as he launches a fireball into the room, killing three of the Gricks, and heavily injuring the other two. Kaimin shoots and kills one of the Gricks with his hand crossbow. As Grid strikes down the last Grick and the sounds of battle dwindle, our heroes begin to hear something else, the sound of shameless, broken weeping, that is coming from behind a closet door. Grid rushes to the door and opens it, and a shriek cuts through the depths. In the closet is a soiled young man in dark clothing, his eyes red with tears, and the look of someone who has not slept for a ten day. Kaimin walks up beside Grid, and the man's hands instinctively shield his face as he screeches, Mercy! For the love of the gods, mercy, please! Kaimin asks, We mean you no harm. Who are you, and how did you end up here? The man sniffles before answering, Kelim. My name's Kelim, most call me Kelim the Weasel. I came down the well with my companions, the fine fellows of Daggerford, you may have heard of us. Kaimin thinks back to the yawning portal, but cannot recall hearing about the fine fellows coming down earlier in the day, so asks, how long have you been here? A little more at ease, Kelim answers, a couple of days, maybe longer. If you escort me back to the well, I will give you this. Kelim holds a large spell book into the air. Kaimin takes a moment, before turning to the rest of the group, I think we can believe his story is genuine, he seems like a scared man just wanting to get out of here. Holt nods, I agree, who wants to head back? I think we could probably press on further though. Grid feeling a little fatigued comments, I don't think it will be a good idea to go deeper, and have to look after the weasel. We have already done a lot of fighting today, I say we take him back, as he will only slow us down. Tiasis, his ego still a little bruised, like his skin from the attack of the air elemental, agrees, we should take him back. Our hero's decision made, they head back towards the well, however Grid, being well Grid, can't resist going back through the broken arch before shouting, can you see me? Tiasis his patience running a little thin at the now invisible barbarian, replies, no we cannot. As our heroes pass through the room with a forest of pillars, near the exit to the dungeon, they are ambushed by five bugbears. The bugbears launch a vicious assault, and Holt takes a nasty wound to the head, while the rest of our heroes suffer a couple of minor injuries. The movement of the invisible grid attracted the attention of one of the bugbears, as it went to pass him, and though a little surprised, the bugbear did manage to hit the shimmering form of the barbarian. Kellim the weasel was quickest to react, and ran at a full sprint towards the well. Holt and Kaimin inflict minor injuries on a pair of bugbears, before Tiasis launched a fireball into the center of the room. As the flames dissipate, our heroes are relieved to see the charred remains of the five bugbears. While Holt and Kaimin check the bugbears for anything useful, Grid runs after Kelim. Kelim, unaware that the invisible Grid is following him, makes it back to the well and drops a dragon in the bucket, 
and has to do a double take, as he notices another four dragons drop beside it, before he hears the loud shout from Grid, right in his ear, hurry guys, the lift is on its way down. A few minutes later, our heroes and Kelim, are slowly being raised back to the yawning portal. Just as the sounds of the voices in the tavern begin to become legible, the place goes quiet, as our heroes come into view. Once the lift is at the top there is a loud celebration, as a man shouts, I told you they would be back within two hours, and the dumb one would be dead. A moment later the whole place erupts with laughter, as the man falls flat on his back, as his nose explodes with blood, and grid becomes visible, the barbarian's fist where the man's head was a moment earlier. I give our heroes a few moments to collect themselves, and embrace the atmosphere, of their successful venture into Undermountain, before I called them over for a well-earned ale. As I pulled the ales for our heroes, I congratulated them, well done for all coming back safe. It is a lot tougher down there than most people expect, even after all the stories of how hard it is. Just take Kellim for example, he was in way over his head. Grid nods in agreement, and asks, he mentioned he was part of a group called the Fine Fellows. How long ago did they set off? It took me a moment to recall, before replying, about two days. That is way too long for a group such as themselves, so it's unlikely they are still alive. Our heroes tapped their tankards together with a cheer, before enjoying their ales. As our heroes sat drinking, the Cholton Obaya approached them, I see you made it back. Did you find any unwanted magic items? Our heroes took a moment to decide between them what magic items they did not need, and decided they did not need the armor of gleaming, the hat of disguise, or the necklace of fireballs. Though they did not mention, some of the items were in their possession before they went down, I am sure Obaya would not have minded. Obaya handed over 171 suns for the three magic items. A really good price, and some of our heroes were now eager to spend their hard-earned money. Tiasa said he would take the spell book and pay the difference of what it was worth, though that was quite a bit more than he was expecting, he had savings in the bank to cover the cost. Our heroes offered a room in Trollskull Manor for the wizard to study the book's contents. Tiasus was happy to accept. It was early evening, and our heroes were on their way back to Trollskull Alley, when they noticed a drunken man heading towards them, swaying from side to side as he walked. Kaimin concerned the man may be swaying due to injury, or worse putting it on, so he could get close to our heroes and attack them, studied the man intently. The swaying was put on, but the man was no threat, and as once he got near them, our heroes recognized Jails to Silvermanet, though it did take them a moment to see through his disguise. Once Jailster was close enough to talk, in a quiet tone he said, the gents are looking to add to their ranks, they are going to make a deal in front of the Blue Alley, to recruit a Red Wizard of Ty named Asloon Besant, at sunrise tomorrow. He'd make a powerful ally, so keep him off out of their hands at all costs. Jailster then continued on up the street, still swaying from side to side. As our heroes finished their walk back to Trollskull Alley, Grid commented, well, I guess we are not getting a lie-in in the morning. Once our heroes are back in Trollskull Alley, they make their way straight to Steam and Steel, to spend the money burning holes in some of their pockets. Holt begins looking at the armor, and sees a nice set of plate. Seeing Holt admire the armor, Embrick smiles, ah, a fine suit of armor, some of my best work. Normally it would cost 1500 dragons, but for you Holt, I will sell it for 1200 dragons. 1150, if you part exchange your chain mail. Holt sighs, a dwarf can dream. Your offer is great, but I don't have enough dragons. There is a chink of a coin pouch in Holt's ear, as Kaimin smiles, how much do you need Holt? I can lend you it. Holt smiles, really? You have made my day come in. While Holt is getting his new armor sorted, Grid can't decide between getting a maul or a pike, so buys both. Our heroes make their way back to Trollskull Manor, and have one of Holt's ales to unwind, before enjoying a well-earned sleep. The next morning, while they are lying in bed, come in first and then Grid second, hear a tap at their door, before Holt asks, can you help me put my armor on? Both of Holt's companions reply with a, no. While Holt is sitting at a table in the bar, a foul mood beginning to set over him, as he thinks about how he can get his armor on unaided, a chalkboard is placed on the table in front of him with, what's up Holt, written on it. 
Hulk mutters, I need help putting my new armor on, and my so-called friends can't even help me with that. The message on the chalkboard is replaced with, maybe I can help. Holt smiles, that would be grand lift. With a spring in his step, Holt rushes to his room to retrieve his armor, and brings it down to the bar. What a sight it must be, to see a poltergeist helping someone get their armor on. Pieces of armor flying through the air, and gently being placed in the correct position. Holt sat with a smug smile on his face, is soon joined by the rest of his companions. Tiasus is still fast asleep, after spending most of the night studying his new spell book. After a hearty breakfast, our heroes make their way to Blue Alley. Arriving just before sunrise, and they find a place to stand, where they have a clear line of sight of the alley, but won't be seen themselves. A few minutes later, the wizard Esloon Besant arrives, with some tough-looking thug bodyguards. Kaimin moves up and shoots the wizard, with his hand crossbow. The wizard is quite badly injured, but survives the shot. Meanwhile, Grid has rushed in roaring like a bear, and with a mighty swing with his axe, chops half of a thug's head off, and with a backhand swing, digs his axe deep in the chest of a second thug. Holt catches up, and casts a blessed spell. The wizard bleeding heavily turns invisible, and our heroes see his shimmering form, move towards the blue alley dungeon. Grid moves deeper into the alley, and thanks to Holt's blessed spell, kills the thug captain, that was standing next to the wizard before he disappeared. Back the way our heroes came from, they hear a shout, they have attacked a sloon. Kill the Xanathar scum. Kaimin laughs, as he realizes the gents have arrived, and think our heroes are working for Xanathar. Just as the four gents are closing in, Grid kills a pair of thugs, while Holt kills the last of the thugs making up the wizard's bodyguard. The leader of the gents, an assassin lands a vicious hit on Grid, with a poisoned blade right in the barbarian's vitals. Grid blood pouring from his guts, unleashes a barrage of attacks on the assassin, and leaves himself open, expecting to kill the assassin with his blessed attacks. The assassin withstands the assault, and stabs Grid again with a poisoned blade to his vitals. It was only the barbarian's orcish toughness which kept him on his feet when a lesser man would have died. The assassin caught off guard, but he did not finish the barbarian off with his final attack, does not have time to react to the barbarian's axe swing, that takes his head clean off his shoulders. The assassin's head bounces to the floor, the surprised look forever on his face. A shent thug moves up to where the assassin was standing a second earlier, and lands a blow on the side of Grid's head. The barbarian finally succumbs to his wounds, and collapses to the floor. Holt laughs, as his new plate armor deflects attack after attack from the gent thugs. Kaimin manages to kill a pair of gent thugs, but takes a couple of nasty wounds in the process, his armor nowhere near as protective as Holt's. Holt casts a cure spell on Grid, and the barbarian gets back to his feet, before stepping up behind the last gent thug, and snapping its neck, as he twists its head. The combat over, our heroes retreat to a safe distance, and have a short rest in the nearby Storm's front tavern, where they come to the conclusion, they need to follow the wizard into the Blue Alley dungeon. As our heroes approach the entrance to the dungeon, they notice a pair of empty vials on the floor. Clearly the wizard had drunk a couple of healing potions, before going in. Before they enter, our heroes write their names in the book outside, and see that the last name was Esloon Besant, confirming the wizard had indeed entered the dungeon. As our heroes make their way to the door, Grid mutters under his breath, I hate this place. In the dungeon, our heroes reach the first T-junction, and the mural on the wall has slightly changed since their previous visit. It still showed the heroes dying horrible deaths, but now also showed the wizard impaled on a spike at the bottom of a pit. The message stating, 50 feet south of the barred window is a secret door, remains the same as the previous visit. Holt points to his left, how about we go the gold way this time? Kaimin and Grid nod in approval, and our heroes head off into a part of Blue Alley they never got the chance to visit last time. Around the first corner on the east wall of the corridor is a door made of ivory-coated iron, carved with figures of carnivorous animals eating their prey. The door is locked, and after a few moments of trying, Kaimin informs the others, I do not have the required skill to unlock such a well-made lock. Grid steps forward, and with a shoulder charge takes the door clean off its hinges. In the room behind the door, the walls are covered with images of treasure chests of varying sizes. 
All the chests are open, revealing rows of sharp teeth. Grid notices a chest at the far side of the room, and laughs, I have heard stories of creatures like these before. The barbarian is surprised when he opens the chest, and instead of seeing rows of teeth, sees a sizable amount of treasure. He is even more surprised when the ceiling begins to change form, and a pair of mimics attack him. Grid is quick to react, and roars like a bear as he kills one of the mimics, before Holt steps into the room, and takes care of the other. While Holt and Kaimin collect the treasure, Grid runs off deeper into the dungeon. Grid runs full speed down a staircase, and straight into a room filled with illusions, that make it appear to be a pasture area with lush grasses, a water trough, and a clear sky. There are two silos bordering the pasture, and each contains a single silver-plated ox skull, with runes covering its horns. As Grid enters the room, the door shuts behind him, and a faintly echoing moo can be heard. Grid rushes through the room, and into one of the silos. As the barbarian grabs the ox skull by the horns, the sky in the pasture room begins to darken. A few moments later, some kind of horrid-looking undead minotaur appears on the grass, and then charges towards Grid goring him. After suffering a nasty injury in the initial assault, Grid roars like a bear, and unleashes a counterattack that has little effect on the undead Minotaur. Holt and Kaimin rush to catch up with Grid, and find the door at the bottom of the stairs locked. The Minotaur unleashes another assault on Grid, who fares a little better from this barrage of attacks. Grid then drops his axe, and draws his maul, thinking it may have more effect on the Minotaur. It does not. Kaimin unlocks the door with ease, but the door is too heavy for him to open. Holt steps forward, leave this to me. Holt pushes with all his might, but the door does not budge. As the sound of combat behind the door continues, Holt sighs, we may have a problem. Grid realizing his maul is not as comfortable as his axe, drops it, and kicks his axe up, catching it, and swinging it in one fluid motion at the Minotaur. The attack does little damage to the Minotaur. Things are not looking good for the isolated Grid. Holt realizing the door is too heavy to open by himself, turns to Kaimin, Push together on the count of three. Kaimin nods, and Holt begins to count, one, two, three. As Holt and Kaimin push together, the door moves an inch with great difficulty, before becoming very easy to open the rest of the way. Kaimin takes one look at the Minotaur and begins to panic, as a cold fear washes over him. The rogue somewhat keeps his composure, and shoots a pair of crossbow bolts at the Minotaur. Holt charges forward, and with a radiant strike fells the mighty Minotaur. After patching Grid's wounds up, our heroes venture further on down the gold route, and come to a long corridor with a door on the west side. Kaimin examines the door before opening it. Beyond the door is a flight of stairs that the rogue notices are covered in a sticky glue. Grid looks at the glue and touches it with his finger, and with a great effort he pulls his finger up, ripping the skin off. Holt looks at Grid's finger, well, I don't think we want to step on that. Kaimin spends a moment studying the stairs, I agree, and I can't see a way up without stepping on the glue. Our heroes decide to continue on further down the corridor instead of going up the stairs, and around a corner they reach a barred window. Grid smiles, a barred window, wasn't there something about it? Kaimin nods, yes, there is a secret door fifty feet south. As Grid sets off south with his wand of detection, Holt looks through the bars and sees a familiar room. The room has seven circular platforms hanging from the ceiling, that Holt recognizes from his previous visit into Blue Alley, but from this vantage point, he can see a magical sword hanging from one of the platforms. With the aid of his wand, Grid finds the secret door, and it is indeed fifty feet south of the barred window. Beyond the secret door is a winery, with the words, Strength Cannot, written across the west wall. Fearing some sort of trap, our heroes leave the winery, without taking any of the bottles it contained. The gold route mostly explored, our heroes make their way back to the entrance, and head down the silver. It does not take long for our heroes to find the Isloon Besant, or at least his remains. He had literally fell victim to one of the many traps in Blue Alley and fell down a pit and got impaled on a spike at the bottom. Our heroes retrieve the wizard's body, and Grid asks, well, now we have found him, can we leave this place? Kaimin nods in agreement to leaving Blue Alley, but Holt states, I saw a magic sword from that barred window. 
We are not that far away from the room it is in. I will go by myself if you want to leave. Kaimin smiles, a magic sword. Are you sure? If so, then lead the way. Holt begins heading towards the room, I am sure. Grid hesitates for a moment as his companions head off, before he runs to catch up muttering, I really hate this place. A few minutes later, our heroes reach the room with the circular platforms. Kaimin turns to Holt, I remember now why we did not explore this room. The jumps required between the platforms are impossible. Holt looking a little disappointed, I forgot about that. Grid smiles, I can do it. Holt and Kaimin then remember that Grid was not with them the last time they were in this room. Grid then takes a run and jump, and makes it look quite easy jumping between the platforms. Once the barbarian is on the sixth platform, he retrieves the sword. However, as Grid begins to jump back across the platforms, he misjudges the first jump and misses the platform, and falls to the floor. Luckily the fall was not far, and Grid is able to make his way back to the others. Grid presents Holt with the moon-touched sword, and the dwarf smiles, thank you Grid. And that is where we will leave the tale for this week.